Hi everyone, I haven't done a face of the day in a really long time so I thought I would do that today just to kind of update you on what I'm using and I'm also using some new things today. So I'm going to start with, as always with the Veil Primer from Hourglass. This is my favorite. You always get the T-zone under the eyes and that's about it. So that's an amazing primer, the best I've ever used. Okay, so next I'll show you what I've been doing um, foundation-wise. I am still using Immaculate, and what I'm doing is I'm putting it on a mirror, one pump of Immaculate, and two pumps of something else, depending on the day. And today I'm going to use the CoverGirl Outlast Stay Fabulous 3-in-1 Foundation. I really like this, so I use two pumps of that and one pump of Immaculate. Then I take a brush, I'm going to use the, the, what do you call this, angled kabuki from Sigma. Mix up the foundations, like so. And then, just kind of stipple. And what, why I do this is, A, because maculate is super expensive, but I, it's totally worth it, but still, it's expensive. And B, because I don't think the coverage is quite enough for me. I like full coverage or at least a medium coverage, so this combination or the combination of that with the um, Clinique Stay Matte, it does both. It gives me all the skincare effects of the hourglass with the mattifying properties and then the coverage of the other foundation. So that's why I do that. <clears throat> And that, those work well together. You know, another one of my Holy Grail foundations is um, NARS Sheer Glow, but that does not mix, that doesn't play well with Immaculate. Okay, so there's foundation. And then I just kind of go over and if I need a little more in certain places, I'll do it. Next, I'm going to use the Bobbi Brown Tinted Eye Brightener, and I have this in peach light to medium peach and I kind of just go where it's really dark under my eyes maybe a little up there definitely right there for some reason I always have darkness right there and then I have a brush I really have been using a lot this is the Real Techniques setting brush what this is actually meant for I have no idea but I like it for this purpose so that's sort of a corrector. And then if I feel I need more coverage under the eyes, I have been using, <clears throat> basically trying to use this up, the NARS Concealer in Light 2 Vanilla. It's okay. I, I'm not a big fan of this, to be honest. So I might use a little bit right there. And just blend that with the same brush. And then I have a little bit of pigmentation there, there, a little bit there that I don't like. So I'm just going to take the same brush and blend that in. So it's Saturday. I don't have anything terribly exciting to do. I may have a job later, but I'm not sure yet. All right, so that's concealer. And then I'm going to show you the Urban Decay Powder. This is new. It's called Naked, let's see, Naked Skin Ultra Definition Pressed Finishing Powder. I bought it in <laughs> Naked Light, no doubt. And I'm going to use this Sigma F30 Synthetic Brush. This is pretty powdery, but I like to just tap this on top of the foundation. And I think it's nicely matte. It's not cakey. It's not like the most finely milled powder I've ever seen, but it's it's okay. I just wanted to try it. And I think it's pretty nice, to be honest. Okay, so there's that. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> goodness, I'm going to try this. I'm going to use this, rather, this Nude On Board Bronzer from MAC. I'm just going to kind of contour with it. I use a very small amount of this. I don't feel like I need a lot because I am so pale. So there's that. And then next I'm going to use a blush I haven't used on a video before. 
but I do really like. It is the Lorac Powder Cheek Stain in Petal Pink. It looks like this, Lorac Pro. There's the color. These are very little pots, but they pack a big punch, I think. I really like the one called Ruby Slippers. I think it's Ruby something, but it's really nice. Okay. Let's blend that a little bit better. And then, just cause, I don't always use this every day, but this is a highlighter um, from Elizabeth Arden, Rose Illumination. And I have another one of these kind of brushes, and I think this is great for highlighter as well as concealer. Just right there, cheekbones, right there. There's that. Now I'm going to use a different eye shadow. I haven't used this before. I've actually never used this. This is the Photo Op Eyeshadow Trio in Dark Room from Smashbox. I thought it would be fun to do a sort of a daytime smoky eye without going too crazy. Can't go crazy in the daytime. All right, so what I'm gonna start with is the, the gray in the trio on the lids. And I'm using a 217 from MAC, but you could use a 239 or, you know, um, any kind of sort of a lay down shadow brush. This is more of a blending brush, but I find that I'm using these more than I am the flat brushes. For no particular reason, it's just the way I've been doing things lately. I love the trios from Smashbox, especially the ones in matte finish. They are extremely pigmented and easy to work with. I hope that they bring out more matte trios, but we'll see. So, okay, so that's how that's starting off. And then I'm going to use the, the black and the base shadow brush from Real Techniques and tap, tap, tap. Just gonna use that on the outer corner right there. Then I'm gonna take a E35 brush and just blend the heck out of that. And then I am going to blend with my fingers because I think they're the best tools. Okay. All right. In this trio, there's a white. So I'm going to take a pencil brush and use that in the inner corner. I don't think it's matte, so it'll be interesting to see how that works. Okay. It's not the most pigmented, but it's okay, I guess. Just right there in the inner corners. Underneath the lower lash line, I'm going to take a tiny pencil brush and the gray that I started with and just sort of take it under the lash line. And you may or may not like the look of water lining, but I feel naked without it. So I'm going to water line with MAC Smolder.
And then I'm going to just take this same pencil on the upper lash line, just like this. And then I'm going to smudge it a little bit with that same pencil brush I used on the lower lash line. Now to add a little bit of brightness to the lid, I'm going to take, I'm just going to wipe this off on a clean towel, but I'm going to take the same brush I used initially and the white and just sort of hit the center of the lid like that, just for a little brightening effect. Okay, and then I'm going to use, oh, I have a Buxom mascara. I don't even know where I got this, but I saw it in my stash and I thought I'm going to use this up before it goes bad. It's quite nice, but the reason I'm not thrilled with this mascara, I've used it in the past, I've bought it several times actually, is that it kind of goes bad quickly. So like, whereas you can get a couple months out of a voluminous mascara, no problem, this is more like a month. And for the price, that's kind of irritating. I don't buy many high-end mascara. This is by no means high-end, but it's more than going to CVS. Okay, so then I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my brows. I like, I'm still using this, this Illamasqua Brow Cake in Motto, which is a nice, it's a taupe, a dark taupe. And I like it because it works on most people. There's a nasty rumor going around that Sephora will no longer carry a mascara, but I hope it's not true. Okay. All right, so for lips, because this is a pretty subtle smoky eye, I would say, I can use a little bit more color on the lips, I think. So, um, just for fun, I'm going to show you some of these lip tars from OCC. And I think I'm going to do, I have moment, Momento, I don't think it's a Momentum, but Momento, and I'm going to dab in a dot of this darker color. And this is, let's see, vintage. So I'm going to take, first of all, I'm going to line my lips because these are a little bit more, I don't know, finicky. This is a CoverGirl liner. One of the best nude liners I own in Seduce. And then I'm gonna take a blob of this, I'll show you, on the same mirror I used for my foundation. That was just way too much I just put on there, but that's okay. And then a dot of this. So it's mostly going to be lighter, but I just wanted to add a little bit more color. So this is how it looks right now, kind of strange. And then I'm going to take, um, let's see if I have a lip brush. I may not have a lip brush, but that's okay. I'm going to use this MAC 208, which is... I guess a liner brush, it's angled, but it's very small, and I think that'll be a good thing for this product. I'm on the fence on if I love this or hate it, to be honest, but I just want to show you how it works. I'm just not sure. I don't feel like it's the best lasting thing I own, but it does feel nice and it smells good, so not sure yet. I'll update you in a couple weeks. Okay, so this is what I do with this. I'm just trying to stay very precise with it because this has been something that people say bleeds.
So I'm just trying to keep I feel like whenever you mix in vintage with anything, it turns it very red, which maybe wasn't the look I was going for, but it's okay. I like it. So anyway, that's my face of the day. Um, I will set it with the bridal finishing spray from Scandinavia. Should have already done this because I have mascara on, but whoops. So I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. And if you have any questions about any of these products, let me know requests are always welcome and thank you so much for watching and subscribing take care bye bye